The new school year is underway and there are not enough teachers to educate Oklahoma students. State Superintendent of Public Instruction Janet Barisi calls the shortage critical. Low pay is cited as the top reason for the lack of teacher applicants. So Barisi has challenged superintendents and school boards to come up with money to give all teachers a $2,000 pay raise. I'm going back to our original hypothesis. At schools across the state, administrators and teachers are being forced to play a juggling act with classroom size and teacher duties because they just don't have the instructors for all public school children. Craig McVeigh is the superintendent for El Reno Public Schools. In the rural Oklahoma areas, the shortage is really acute. Um, anywhere from math science to even elementary, which, you know, 10 years ago, it was unheard of to have a shortage of elementary teachers, but now it's really, it's really a crisis. Um, you know, we're at El Reno, we're three elementary teachers um, short. We have combined classes and we um, are three special ed teachers short. Dr. Keith Ballard is the superintendent for Tulsa Public Schools. TPS is short about 40 teachers and of course we still have an intense recruiting effort. We're, we're looking for where uh, teachers may be uh, ripped. We're even looking in other states and we've gone there. Intense recruiting effort to get teachers. Oklahoma City Public Schools is the largest district in the state with some 45,000 students. The district has 55 teacher vacancies. Sandra Park is the deputy superintendent. About half of those openings are just traditional classroom teachers, elementary, secondary teachers. A great uh, area of need, of course, is special education, which has always been an area of hard to fill teaching positions, but this year in particular, as we look at teaching shortages across the state, special ed teachers are very hard to find. We will be surveying districts to find out where their shortages are and figure out where that gap is and why that gap is there. State Superintendent of Public Instruction Janet Barisi has formed the Education Workforce Shortage Task Force. The first of four meetings was recently held at the state capitol. Several dozen teachers, school administrators, lawmakers, and civic leaders from across Oklahoma attended. Low teacher salaries were identified as the main reason many educators are either leaving the profession for higher paying jobs in the private sector or going to other states where teachers are paid more. It's a kind of a perfect storm. Um, Texas pays a lot more. Um, so our young people that are graduating in our schools of education are crossing the border um, for about $10,000 more per year than we can offer. In Dallas, for instance, a first year teacher earns $46,000. In Oklahoma, starting teachers earn more than $14,000 less at $31,600. That is not up for debate. Teachers in Oklahoma are not being compensated enough for the work that they're doing. Uh, we, uh, I constantly hear as, as early as last week from teachers who are working second jobs all of the time to provide the minimums for their families. Deanna Roach is on the task force. She is a Spanish teacher at Edmonds Deer Creek High School. My son and daughter-in-law who have worked much less years than I have are making way beyond what I am, one of them twice what I'm making. Um, I have a master's degree, I'm national board certified. Teacher Sony Lovell also has a master's degree. That gives her an extra $700 a year compared to teachers with an undergraduate degree. With all my graduate school as a single parent, I was on um, financial aid quite a bit. I owe about 89000 and the $700 a year is not going to pay that off. <laughs> It's not, not even coming close. According to the Oklahoma State Department of Education, Oklahoma ranks 47th in the nation for average teacher salaries. It ranks 41st in the nation for starting teacher salaries. According to Parks, the pay scale is influencing the career paths of college-bound students. We've worked with our universities and some of our agencies around the state to look at what our teacher pool will be for the next few years, and we're finding about a 50% decrease in the number of students enrolling in teacher education than there has been in the past. So what we are looking at down the road is even a greater shortage for the state of Oklahoma. Okay, great discussion. We will take these comments. Just two days prior to this meeting, Barisi issued a challenge to school superintendents and school board members to come up with money out of their own budgets to give teachers a $2,000 a year raise. 
are carryover within districts. The amount of money they carry over from year to year has, has reached a historic high. It's over $710 million and, and climbing. Um, if we take just 10% of that amount, that creates $70 million. We put those two numbers together, we have an excess of $100 million. That's the amount of money we need to give every teacher in the state a $2,000 raise. Dr. Ballard says he doesn't know how the superintendent came up with those figures. Superintendent Barisi clearly does not understand school finance and she's playing games and we don't need that. We need to have a real discussion about a teacher shortage and a real discussion about how we can pay teachers. Ballard and other superintendents say carryover money is a necessary part of a school district's budgeting process. It is used while awaiting money from other sources like the federal government or for unexpected expenses such as the May 31st tornado in El Reno. Our loss to our, our school was, you know, anywhere from 2.2 to two and a half million dollars. Um, going to be covered by insurance eventually, but that money is coming out of general fund and building fund while we're waiting on insurance and reinsurers to reimburse us. If we added a half million dollars to that, that's three million dollars out of a, that would have been all of our carryover this year. It is there and I am challenging board members and superintendents to go deep into their budgets. Take a look at their priorities. We understand every, this has been hard. We understand that there have been cuts, but we also know as we go around the state, teachers are talking about waste they're still seeing in their school districts. It is unworkable uh, to say that districts have the wherewithal uh, to give a $2,000 raise. School administrators say pay raises need to be more than $2,000 and districts shouldn't have to pay for any of it. But there's an effort to put it on the backs of administrative costs um, politically and that's the easy thing to do. The hard thing to do is examine um, really how a school works and how a school's funded and, and um, I, think, um, I think that's one of the things that I would ask the governor and the legislature to do um, is to really examine you know, if we're going to talk about administrative cuts, what are we going to cut? Ballard believes it's time for lawmakers to replenish the $250 million cut to education during the recession. A hundred million dollars so that we can replenish teacher positions that were lost, so that we can offer teachers a significant raise. Another hundred million or so because we have 30,000 new kids that have never been accounted for. This message needs to be told to the public. 